I am just overwhelmed by you all being here today. It is just incredible to me for women to come together and to rejoice in what the Lord is doing in their lives or the possibility of what God can do in their lives. Midweek, I mean, it's a Tuesday. Isn't that awesome? It's Tuesday. So I am... I mean, it was an early morning for us today. Our daughter, Laura, we have four children. Our oldest daughter, Lee Beth, is um, a sophomore, or I'm sorry, junior. Gosh, I cheated her. A junior at Baylor, and our um, son is 15, and he actually homeschools. And then we have two uh, daughters, twins, Laurie and Landra, that go to Faith Christian School in Grapevine. And this is our first year of cheerleading. Laurie tried out for cheerleader, and she is my little organized one, um, just my only organized one. And so she, um, you know, was so excited, and we have been planning for this, and, you know, she keeps a notebook with everything that is required of a cheerleader, and it's a new deal. I mean, first of all, we went to this meeting to learn how much it was going to cost with all the camps and the outfits and then the schedule for what they would need to do. And it's exciting, though, because she hops around the house and jumps and cheers all the time. Handstands, I mean, randomly, like we're setting the table, and all of a sudden I see her feet go up. And she... <laughs> but today, she had to be at the school very early to prepare for a pep rally. And I had to remind her, because yesterday she was not really excited about that. She said, why did they make us go at 6.30? I mean, she's junior high, she's 13. This is not varsity. And I said, honey, remember the commitment that you made last spring? And, it, and we talked about all the responsibilities. And so she re realized that commitment that she'd made. And then she also realized that with that commitment came a strong privilege of being a cheerleader. And in Laurie's cheerleader packet, they were given the objectives of a cheerleader. I always wanted to be a cheerleader. I could not. Um, it was my rhythmic ability. <laughs> I don't have any rhythm. Um, it's just, you can see when I, I mean, that's the great thing about praising the Lord and, you know, clapping your hands because he does not care. Now you may look and go, oh my gosh, that poor girl needs to stop, but he doesn't care. So it's okay. But as a cheerleader, the crowd cares if you don't have rhythm. So I never was a cheerleader. I never got to wear the cute outfit. I never just experienced that joy. So for all the cheerleaders out there, go rhythm. I'm so excited. And we expect great things as we're singing these songs and clapping our hands. But Laurie has become a cheerleader and her objectives as a cheerleader were outlined by their cheerleading coach. And one of the objectives, there's three actually, one of the objectives is obviously to support the team. Objective number one. Objective number two is to stir up the crowd. And they learn all these cheers. They go to camp just to stir up the crowd. And then also the third thing, which is kind of what she had to worry about this morning, was the behind-the-scenes work. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Well, it amazes me what influencers cheerleaders are. If you think about a typical sporting event and go to a game, let's say football, for example. Think about these women, and generally cheerleaders are women. There may be a few men scattered in, but generally they are women. And you have 10 to 12 women dressed in cute outfits that spur on hundreds of pounds of men and massive muscles down a field and up a field. I mean, they cheer them on. And then they're able to move the crowd to chant for the team and to get them fired up. I mean, cheerleaders have a large amount of influence on a sporting event. Well, it's interesting to me that it only takes 10 or 12 women to move a stadium full of people. I started thinking about women and the power and the influence that each of us has. We are influencers. Now, I don't know if that's news to you, but if it is, understand that's good news. We are a powerful group. We have the power to sway people. We motivate them. We move them. We get them stirred up. I do it every morning. <laughs> every morning.
standing on that little intercom. It's time to get up. And if things aren't going well, I start singing. And that's always not good. <laughs> always, always, always. But we are influencers. What are we using or what are we um, carrying through in our influence? This summer, um, God just really spoke to me. And, and, you, and when I say spoke to me, he did not say, Lisa, I need to tell you something. It wasn't like that. It was a, a, a yearning for him, a time where I really dove into scripture. Ed and I take off during the summer, but this summer was typically, uh, was not typical. We, he had speaking engagements all through the summer. And so we traveled quite a bit, but I had a lot of time to really dive into the word of God without having you know, to tote children somewhere. I mean, it was just a relaxed time. And I just know that in my heart, God placed a burden there on my life first. You know, when we share from the stage or the platform here at Fellowship Church, and for those of you who are visiting, we welcome you and hope you'll come some weekends to our services. If not, just make yourself at home whenever we have flavor um, and participate in another church somewhere. But if you're a part of Fellowship, I just want to tell you, whenever anyone speaks, the message is not for the masses first. It's for us as individuals. And God's really placed a burden on my life that... I was not being the kind of influencer that he would have me be. Now, I naturally am not someone who enjoys new situations. I don't like to do new things. Change is not my friend. <laughs> but I'm married to Ed. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I tell people that when we were 15 years old, we met, and my family, um, we were like June and Ward Cleaver with female children instead of boys, and it was black and white, and Ed came in the front door, and it, we went to color. And that's the best I can describe <laughs> of my life. So change does not come easily to me. And so for me to try to do something new, and I'm 46 years old. I mean, that is young. Really, that's young. Okay. <laughs> I had to say it in a positive way because I was getting ready to say I'm 46 years old and who needs to change now, you know, but I'm not going to say that. And I just know that I have a sphere of influence. I mean, ladies, we are a powerful group who have a sphere of influence and we need to flavor our world with something important, not just anything, something important. Just to illustrate how women are influencers, and you're going to influence something. For me, it might be my uh, family, my children, uh, it may be a coworker, a client, uh, a friend, someone in your Bible study group, I don't know, but you're going to influence. Um, I was in the grocery store in April. That was not the last time I went to the grocery store, <laughs> but I was in the grocery store, and to show you how influential women are, I made an estrogen decision on the aisle of the grocery store. My friend told me about her estrogen experience, and I quickly determined that I had the same uh, symptoms. I had everything that she had, and so surely her answer was my answer. And so on the aisle at the, um, I believe it was Kroger in Flower Mound, <laughs> I decided to make an estrogen change or an estrogen elevation. I mean, that is the kind of influence that this woman was having on me. I'm like, should not a doctor have that type of <laughs> statement? Which I did go see the, her doctor, but you know, I just thought, backed up and said, well, wait a minute, I gotta get off the grocery store aisle. So anyway, but we are subject to the influences of other women, but yet we are also influencing others. And I am a reluctant influencer. I don't enjoy um, that responsibility all the time. And yet God spoke to me and he gave me a burden to say, Lisa, I have a work for you. I have something I want you to accomplish. And again, here at 46 years old, I'm thinking, why didn't I get a head start on this? Now, I've been involved in ministry here at Fellowship Church and for the past 25 years in ministry. Um, and I have worked very hard alongside of Ed to see people's lives change, to see women grow in their faith, all people to grow in their faith. And yet I feel that sometimes, I, and I know 
that sometimes I have dropped that banner, dropped that, that burden for someone else to pick up because I did not want to get uncomfortable and change and have to stretch and to meet people that I did not know or to share what God had done in my life because of fear of rejection or that someone might think I'm foolish or perhaps maybe they would hear what I was saying but not see it, it would not match necessarily how I was living. And so I had this fear I did not want to carry that burden. But this summer, God just really burdened me. And so I came back from uh, one of our speaking trips, and I called together a group of friends. Now, do you, I mean, you just have to know, I called together five close women. And I said, will you help me carry this burden? And now I've invited you to come and carry the burden as well. It was their idea. I mean, it was their, they're the ones that said, we just need to get a lot more people involved in this. And that's how Flavor was born. Because I realized I cannot put off what God wants me to do. And so Flavor was born in a little meeting with myself and five other women to say, we want Fellowship Church. We want this house. Or if you're a part of another house, we want this house and all other houses to be fueled by the influence of women as they work within the giftedness of how God has created them. Their personality, whichever one you are, whatever your makeup, whatever your gift mix, whatever you are, whether you're shy, whether you're flamboyant, whatever you are, God wants to use you and use me as influencers to make a difference. I frankly am tired of coming week in and week out and having my quiet time in the morning and doing the spiritual stuff and setting aside a part of my life because I don't want to get comfortable. And I, don't, I hope this makes sense to you and that maybe you can identify with this because I get caught up in so many of the things that are my responsibilities as a mom, as a wife, as, as culture dictates. But I want to make a difference for the Lord. I thought of something that came to me um, during this time. And again, like I said, I've worked very hard throughout these years here at Fellowship and in ministry. But for me, it isn't about not doing anything that God wants me to do, but rather not doing everything he wants me to do. I want to do it all. I don't want to get to heaven and God to say, Lisa, you did a good job with that. You did a good job with that. But I had so much more. I want to wield the power that God has given me. And I want you to wield the power that God has given you in miraculous ways so that People will look at your life and they'll go, I want what she has. For too long, I've lived where I'm thinking, I don't know if somebody's looking at me and saying, I want what she has. And I want my life to be such a light and such a salt in this earth that God is honored in everything. And that I'm not just a soccer mom and I'm not just a, a creative worker, and I'm not just a good wife. I want to be beyond that, and that comes from the power of God. So flavor was born, and I'm going to give you an acrostic if you want to jot it down. I think you have something that you can take notes with. I want to give you the purpose and the passion and the, the whole reason behind flavor because I want you to say, the Lord has done something in my life, and I have this flavor in me. He has seized, in fact, 2 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15 says, But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ and through us, you see, through us, we can't drop it, it's through us, the fragrance of the knowledge of him. He spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. For we are to God the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. There is a group of women that are not in this place that you meet and have lunch with and have recreation with and all these things that are some saved, but some perishing. 
And God wants to use you to influence their lives. He wants to use you to flavor their life as an aroma. When you're walking through the mall and you pass the Cinnabon place, (laughs) is that just not cruel? In fact, I used to lead a group of women at Grapevine Mills and we would walk the mall before the mall opened, you know, and we'd power walk through there. Well, it was just awful because Cinnabon gets there early and starts up up the ovens and you can just smell it and you're like, oh my goodness. But you know, I came to, we started talking about it. I said, just take the aroma and make a taste out of it so that you feel like you've had one, but you really haven't had one. (laughs) They bought it for a while, but it didn't work too good. But that is what we want to be an aroma that is saturating the lives of people around us. So flavor, F, fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. When I fix my eyes on anything but Jesus, I am so misguided and misdirected and I'm so scattered. And it's just like uh, Jesus tells us in Matthew, seek first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added unto you. Seek his righteous ways. Fix your eyes on Jesus. And that's what we're going to do here in Flavor. All of these things. This is a week, a monthly gathering for women so that we can be energized and take our influence and flavor into the world. Let God's love fall on you and through you to others. Do you realize how much God loves you? I mean, we see John 3, 16 here, there, and yonder, but that is a verse that just is unbelievable. God so loved the world that he gave his son. What a huge price tag for you and for me. He loves us. And until we receive that love, we have a difficult time putting that out to love others. But we have to love others other people. It's hard. Yesterday I was in a store wanting to buy some glasses and um, I visited with this girl and she was helping me and she was so cute, just so cute. And I, at the end of the whole thing, I realized that I have to get my eyes checked again. It's been too long. My prescription's over, expired. So anyway, she I, I asked her, I said, do you go to church anywhere? And she said, well, I used to go to fellowship. And I said, really? Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. But this is what's bad. I said, oh, really? Well, where where are you going now? And she said, well, I don't go anymore. And I said, oh, man, that breaks my heart. I said, if you were to say you were going somewhere else and you're growing and, and living for the Lord, then that would be easier for me to swallow, although I'm very, very partial, you know, to the fellowship church. But anyway, I just... my heart was broken and she said something that was just really She said, well, I've just lost a taste for churches because they're just filled with people who pretend that they have it all together. I just wanted to, you know. And everything inside of me said, well, you've surely got to come back, Lisa. Come on, you can do it. But it was love. Something's happened along her journey to, to create that. So that first impulse was, well, I haven't paid the check yet, so I could get my glasses elsewhere. But I'm not. In fact, I'm going to go back. I want to, to make sure that she sees authenticity and sees love and see, has the opportunity. And eventually, it's her decision. But I'm going to do everything I can in the power of God, because it's not me, it's him, to love her and to put those earthly, human, vicious, venomous thoughts away and to put love out there. You know what I'm talking about because before you get back to your office or your home or to pick the children up, something's going to happen to you like that. It could be in the parking lot at this place. (laughs) So we have to choose. If we fix our eyes on Jesus and we receive the love that he has for us, then we're going to be able to love other people. Adjust. A is adjust your routine and schedule to do the work of God. Oh, I would camp out on this one, and we may just do a a whole session on it. Adjust. I I mean, this is just huge because so often we are so cluttered and so overwhelmed with the things that are going on in our lives, good things, but we miss the best thing. So I would challenge you as you seek to flavor your world and to influence that you would adjust 
those things that need to be eliminated and adjust those things that need to be added so that you can have flavor. Perhaps you don't have a daily time with God reading his word. Fall in love with those love letters that he's written you. It will t- multiply your time. You think you don't have time. I know. I don't have any time. But make time. He will multiply your time, and it's worthwhile. So adjust your routine. I don't know what it is for you. You, you just make a little chart of that. Value the vision to use of uh, God to use you to build and fill his house. I cannot talk enough about the local church. It's the only institution that Christ established. And so for us to be true followers of Christ, we have to be hooked up, plugged in, sold out, working for, ministering with the local church. And again, I'm partial to fellowship, but wherever it is for you, make that your priority so that you're not just flavoring here out in your world and your sphere of influence, but you're actually bringing them to join hands with other people who are of the same mind and of the same spirit, working together to perfection as Christ uh, promises us through his word, that he will continue to work in us. So value the vision of God to use you to build and fill his house. Oh, own the task of flavoring for the eternally significant. Don't pass it off to someone else. Don't think that it's someone else's job who can speak, someone else's job who can do hospitality, someone else's task. Own it. Take responsibility for yourself. Just recently, um, our 13-year-old daughter for the past uh, seven months has had a boyfriend. They're going out. Neither drive. I don't understand that, but they go out. And that, lit- that just means a phone call, I think, or text message or instant message. <laughs> so the young man that she um, was her boyfriend, who she was going out with, um, He's been a friend of hers forever. I mean, they played together when they were three. So now at 13 or 12, they've hooked up. And over the summer, I don't know what exactly happened. Um, It was uh, post-beginning of school party, so there were other young men involved, uh, meaning that we went to this party for the beginning of school. There were however many girls and however many boys, and they never talked. They never socialized. When the girls were in the pool, the boys were at the... um, trampoline when the girls left the pool and went to the trampoline the boys left the trampoline and went to the pool so I don't know how this hookup happened but I'm just guessing that she has her eye on someone so anyway the big breakup came and I said Landra um, I'm sorry I did not give her anonymity but (laughs) y'all if any of you know the twins you would know which one it was Um, I said Landra you broke up and she said yeah I said honey Tell me that you were sweet and gracious. Y'all have been friends forever. Our families are friends. Tell me that you were so nice. She goes, I said, did he take it well? She goes, well, I don't know. Foster did it for me. (laughs) I said, said, so you had someone else break up for you. (laughs) She goes, mom, that's what you do when you're 13. I was like, oh, okay. So I need to... um, do some uh, PR with the other family, I think. But Landra is a delegator. There are some things that you can delegate, but that was definitely relegation. She just (laughs) pushed it off of her plate. We have to pick up the banner to flavor our worlds. We cannot pass that along to someone else. They can't do it for us. You, uncover your unique gifts and use them to flavor your life and to flavor the lives of others. You're wired and gifted so uniquely, and God wants to use that. And then R is my favorite one of all. In fact, I have an admission to make, another confession. This morning after everyone had left the house and I was home alone with the dogs, I was in my bathroom, and the last one, R, is rejoice in what the Lord is going to do. So I was singing, rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice, and I was skipping in my bathrobe in the house. That's how fired up I was about flavor today. I was so very excited. So that is my confession. I hope you'll skip through your house in your bathrobe because you're so excited about flavor and about what God can do through you. But we have to rejoice. Now, I 
rejoice at this very moment, not because of who's here today and all of that. I'm thrilled. But I rejoice at the anticipation and the expectation of what God is going to do through you and through me. Because of this burden, and it's really not a burden, it's a privilege, it's a banner that we get to carry as we flavor our world. Taste and see what the Lord has done. He is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let others, when they see your life, receive the flavor of what God is doing in you.